Gunshot wound that's stable, awake. Could be a wrist amputation. Just you can buy the time with them. Charlie's, are you walking wounded? Okay, so we're gonna go to the ambulance exchange point. Basically, the lead medic is gonna come off this vehicle. The lead medic will come off the second vehicle. They'll combine over here as the driver and the TC come out of the front. Driver TC come out of the front. Combine over here, and then they'll be giving, uh, going over notes. So they'll give you the most critical, second most critical, third most critical, and fourth most critical. If this is up like this, which will make four litters. Uh, if it's down like this, this is ambulatory. So right now we're set up for litter and ambulatory. And basically what we'll do is we'll do an exchange real quick. The lead medic will tell the other lead medic what he has. I have a, dug, a double leg amputation. I've got a broken arm. I've got a degloving of the hand. And uh, they'll take him off and they'll put him in the exact same spot mirroring our ambulance and their ambulance. We'll button up and they'll both take off. So what's the purpose of a, a field exchange? A field exchange would be used to get medics back online, uh, medics back to an area. If there was a, a greater distance that we have to go to or, an amp or a hospital exchange like behind us, uh, they'll bring the patients out of this hospital and into our ambulance. Um, instead of us going all the way to the Air Force, what we'll do is we'll do a field, uh, an ambulance exchange in the middle of the field and basically give those patients to the other ambulance and the ambulance will take that there so we can refit and come back here for more missions. So this exercise is testing the new field hospital and hospital um, center organizations uh, from notification to mobilization to falling in on equipment, setting it up, receiving patients, 
and then at the end breaking down and going home. The amount of observations and the, the amount of lessons learned that we're collecting is just phenomenal that it's going to change the way we do things in the future. From the individual soldier to the unit to big army there are so many lessons being learned and so many things being practiced that this exercise just is amazing in its, in its scope. Our soldiers and in our case because we support the entire force, joint force, sailors, airmen, marines need to know that if they get injured doing what their nation asks them to do um, or ill that uh, they have the absolute best medical care available and so to have almost a hundred profits from 15 different organizations within MedCom to be pulled out at a moment's notice and to be um, ready to deploy, uh, ready to go um, you know as quickly as they, they did is, is, is unprecedented. So the medical component of an exercise like this is extremely important to readiness because our soldiers and in our case because we support the entire force, joint force, sailors, airmen, marines need to know that if they get injured doing what their nation asks them to do um, or ill that uh, they have the absolute best medical care available uh, in the, they know they have it in the garrison environment but they need to know in the field environment as well and our providers need to be um, tested to the point where they know that they're comfortable being able to do that in, a, in this environment. It's, it's not unusual to have our um, uh, profits uh, in, involved in exercises like this because that's the whole purpose of the, pro, the professional filler system or profits is to have those um, you know specialties that aren't uh, typically um, you know needed on a day-to-day -day basis in an environment where you're not operationally deployed so they're usually in our hospitals and so they know who they are they know that um, when called upon they'll be asked to do that but I think that this is kind of the you know largest scale um, exercise size of that uh, that's occurred in the in, in decades. Our soldiers and in our case because we support the entire force, joint force, sailors, airmen, marines need to know that if they get injured doing what their nation asks them to do um, or ill that uh, they have the absolute best medical care available and they were so proud to uh, tell me what they did. I'm getting choked up thinking about it because it's uh, just to see in their faces they are really motivated about what they do. So I'm taking away from that that we've got a whole lot of dedicated point if you feel like you have developed some difficulty breathing, ICU bed, um, evacuation bed, um, OR load out, uh, OR table. We need some synesthetic to speech settings, CC3 at medic level, and then an OR nurse who can then um, search. Absolutely chaotic. Uh, in the then, medical emergencies can be unpredictable and hectic. This is why Army medical soldiers from various units are taking part in a mass casualty exercise at Fort Hunter Liggett, California. As the training scenario evolves, soldiers will make tough decisions under pressure. 
Those quick choices will determine what medical treatment their patients will receive next. And what we're trying to do is just ensure that, that it's controlled, that we're, we're not missing any uh, important injuries that may be life-threatening. And then as we go forward, ensuring that they get to that next level of care. Whenever you guys are ready to send a The 528th Hospital Center soldiers are assessed on their abilities inside the stressful simulation. Relying on fellow medical personnel to assist when necessary is crucial to performance and the care and well-being of their patients. You have to rely on people who don't work in your section to come and help you to do the job that you do every day, and you have to teach them on the fly, so it's very chaotic. There's a lot of moving pieces, there's a lot of different people that come in and want to help, and maybe you have to kind of guide them to the right way to be the most helpful. We all have to believe that we're here to save lives in the future, so that if in reality we have to up and deploy a hospital of this size on the dive in, in 72 hours, that we're going to go there and we're going to have the right supplies, equipment, and personnel that we need to save lives. I'm Army Sergeant Brandon Keyes, Fort Hunter Liggett, California. The purpose of trapping is to test for viruses and disease. Find a branch about this tall. We chain it up and there's CO2. It's mimicking breath. It attracts mosquitoes. There's a little light down here. This is to protect it from the rain. This light also attracts them when it does get dark here. And then this fan pushes them down and then it just gets stuck in the bottom. Depending on the area, they can catch up to 3,000 mosquitoes in one trap. I mean, this year we've uh, we're getting closer to passing our goal from last year. I know last year we were up to 9,000 mosquitoes the entire season. Uh, this year we've been out trapping for our fourth week now and we've already trapped over 8,000 mosquitoes so far. So we're going to know this is going to be one of our largest seasons. They leave traps out for 24 hours before collecting them. It's time to sort them out, male or female, and count them to see how much we have. Once the mosquitoes are sorted, 10% of the females in each trap are packaged and sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for testing. J-Bear is the only location in Alaska that officially reports results. Public health is not only keeping J-Bear safe, but also the whole state of Alaska, one mosquito at a time. A1C Carly Cavish, J-Bear, Alaska. Hi, my name is Sergeant Ludke. I'm from the 180th Medical Detachment Preventive Medicine located in McChesney Park, Illinois. Did you know that only female mosquitoes bite? Female mosquitoes that are infected are known to spread diseases such as malaria, typhoid fever, or West Nile virus. This is why we as preventive medicine personnel set up mosquito light traps in order to catch these mosquitoes and hopefully identify those that could spread those diseases. The light on the mosquito light trap attracts the mosquitoes, the fan then pulls them down into the reservoir overnight. In the morning, as a preventive medicine team, we collect the mosquito samples and identify them. If a species that is medically important is identified, it is then communicated to the commander and the troops so that preventive measures can be performed. The best thing to do in order to prevent mosquito bites is to utilize the DOD insect repellent system. This can be done through proper wear of a uniform, applying an authorized mosquito repellent, ridding training areas of any standing water, as well as applying chemical treatment to areas of operation. And remember, just one bite from a mosquito that carries an infectious disease can be very harmful to your health. For more information, visit the Public Health Command website for deployed entomology.